So the WoW team recently released some of the work in progress hero talents that are going to be coming with the War Within. So in this video, I want to go over the Mountain Thane tree for the Warrior class. But first we need to go over how hero specs and hero talents are actually going to work because I've seen a lot of people get this wrong. So every spec in the game is going to have access to two different hero specs. For instance, Mountain Thane is shared between Prot Warriors and Fury Warriors, but Arms Warriors don't have access to this. Instead, arms warriors are going to have access to colossus and slayer and then fury is also going to have access to slayer and protection is also going to have access to colossus this is going to work a little bit differently for druids or demon hunters but this rule will still hold true to those as well everyone has access to two different trees they're able to switch between at any point they want if you can currently change any of your normal talents you can change your hero talents or your hero specs now every hero spec is going to have 11 different nodes and you're going to get all of these nodes while leveling up through the War Within. Once you first start the War Within, you're going to get the first node for free. And then while you're leveling up, you're going to be able to choose what nodes you get first. But once you hit max level within the War Within, you'll have every single node. But four of these nodes are going to be choice nodes that you'll be able to switch like normal talents. And they're going to work in the exact same way as choice nodes from your normal class or spec trees. So the main choices you're getting with hero specs or hero talents is you're choosing between the two hero specs and you're getting four different choice nodes with every single one of those hero specs. But that brings us to the Mountain Thane hero spec, which is shared between Prot Warriors and Fury Warriors. And it has a very big emphasis on lightning damage and just being turned into a lightning god. So the starting node is lightning strikes. Damaging enemies with thunderclap, revenge, raging blow, or execute has a 10% chance to also strike one with a lightning bolt dealing moderate nature damage. Right off the bat, already really cool. A lot of your main damaging abilities now just have a chance to strike enemies with lightning and that's already thematically really cool. Lightning strikes occur 50% more often during Avatar. So now you'd have a 50% chance to proc a lightning bolt. Now with how a lot of these trees are made, it seems that the first node and the capstone node that you get last are kind of some of the main pillars that a lot of the other nodes are built off of. So we're also gonna be going over over the capstone node second and the capstone is avatar of the storm casting avatar grants you two charges of thunder blast and resets the cooldown of thunder clap while avatar is not active lightning strikes have a 10 percent chance to grant you avatar for four seconds and the thunder blast proc is your next thunder clap becomes a thunder blast that deals storm strike damage now storm strike damage seems to just be some new damaging type that'll have some other effect of why it being a different damage type type is significant. This is already really cool. We know a lot of this new stuff is also going to add VFX to your different animations. We already know Thunderclap is going to have like a big lightning blast under you. We know Avatar is not just going to turn you into a big rock person now. It's actually going to have a bunch of lightning on you and you're going to look like you're filled with lightning. So there's going to be a ton of new VFX that looks really cool choosing Mountain Thane as well. And depending on these numbers, having Lightning Strike have a chance to grant you Avatar off those lightning strike procs is pretty significant and really cool but with the numbers right now it has a pretty low proc chance but as we go through all of this all of these numbers can change the main thing you want to look for is are these ideas cool now going down the left side of the tree we have lightning strikes for protection storm strike or nature damage your abilities deal is increased by five percent storm strike damage ignores armor and that's one of the main reasons why storm strike damage is significant it ignores armor this can actually cause a lot more damage damage and then thunderclap damage is increased by 50 percent and for fury it does pretty much the same thing storm strike or nature damage your abilities deal is increased by five percent storm strike damage ignores armor but now thunderclap damage is increased by 50 percent and it generates five rage and improve whirlwind and meat cleaver now improve thunderclap as well as whirlwind now this is a pretty significant change for fury for prod this basically just upgrades the damage of what you're already doing but for fury you don't actually use thunderclap clap right now as of right now live in dragonflight if you take thunderclap as fury it actually costs 30 rage but with this it's seeming that with the damage increase it also means thunderclap now generates five rage now what i'm presuming off this is thunderclap now doesn't cost rage and it just overall generates five rage it wouldn't make sense for it to generate five rage and still cost 30 so now thunderclap does a lot more damage a lot more damage in whirlwind and generates five rage at a baseline which right now on dragonflight 
fight, Whirlwind generates no fury. It's free, but it doesn't generate any fury. And then Thunderclap now also gets the benefits from Approved Whirlwind and Meat Cleaver. And what these do is these are the main elements for AoEing as a Fury Warrior. For Improved Whirlwind, when you use Whirlwind, it now generates some base rage and generates some additional rage depending on the amount of enemies hit. And I think it's capped at 8 rage per Whirlwind. So now Whirlwind with this upgrade generates some rage. And after you Whirlwind, your next two single target damage abilities now are AoE abilities. And this is one of the main ways you deal AoE damage as Fury. So just off of that first upgrade, Thunderclap is going to be dealing a lot more damage than Whirlwind does right now. It's going to be generating more rage and you're going to Thunderclap to turn your single target abilities into AoE. But then it also gets Meat Cleaver, which is basically a double upgrade for this. So now instead of Improved Whirlwind, making your next two single target abilities be AoE, it's now your next four. And now Thunderclap is going to get the effects from all of this. So now in basically every situation, if you're choosing Mountain Thane, Fury Warriors are now always going to be using Thunderclap and never using Whirlwind, which is actually a pretty significant change because Thunderclap also adds a pretty massive AoE slow to everything it hits, which in a lot of situations can actually be really good. The first thing I think of is in many Mythic Plus situations where slowing enemies is actually pretty significant. And then below that, we have Thunder Blast. Shield Slam and Bloodthirst have a 20% chance to grant you Thunder Blast, stacking up to two charges, and again, Thunder Blast makes your next Thunderclap deal Storm Strike damage. Now, this can also be pretty significant for Fury again. For Prop, Shield Slam, you're already spamming that at all times, one of your main damaging abilities, especially in single target. But for Fury, depending on what season you're in, you may only use Bloodthirst a little bit, you may use Bloodthirst basically never, or you may be spamming Bloodthirst. That's generally how it's been in Dragonflight. Like season one of Dragonflight, I don't think we really use Bloodthirst that much. Season two, we mainly use Bloodthirst based on us stacking up effects from our tier set to where we would only use Bloodthirst when we had a bunch of stacks, so we weren't using it a ton. So hopefully in the War Within, we go back to Bloodthirst being our mainly used filler for single target or even AoE, where we basically use it on cooldown. I think that's actually a much better playstyle for Fury, because not only is Bloodthirst an ability that generally feels good to use, it also has that built-in heal, so it heals 3% of your life every time you use it, which actually helps with survivability quite a lot. I think a lot of people underestimate how continuous healing over time can make you very, very survivable, especially once you get into much harder content and you're playing correctly. Usually you only die by like 5 to 10% of your health. Usually if you had a little bit more health in most situations, you would just be alive. So if you have a bunch of additional healing over time because we're using Bloodthirst on cooldown, you would actually be a bit more survivable. And then below that, we have our first choice node. We have Steadfast as the Peaks. Victory Rush increases your max health by 10% for 5 seconds or keep your feet on the ground. Thunder Blast reduces damage you take by 4% for 5 seconds. Now for the second one, this is Thunder Blast. So it's any time you get a Thunder Blast proc, you're just taking reduced damage. Now how this is probably going to go, depending on how the scaling is, is keep your feet on the ground will probably be for lower end content or maybe if you're in higher end content that's not particularly dangerous to you. Getting 10% max life after using Victory Rush, which basically every build in the game for Warriors takes impending victory, meaning you get that buff every 25 seconds if you need it, is actually very significant because as I went over, once you're in higher tier content and you're playing correctly, you're usually dying by like 5 to 10% of your health. And if you had additional health, you would probably survive a lot of stuff. So being able to get a big heal and then increase your max life by 10% is very significant especially if we have another season like this Mythic Plus season, once you get super high Mythic Plus right now, you basically need a defensive on a lot of boss abilities or you just die. You can't survive it without a defensive. So something like this is actually very significant. And then we have the middle section, starting off with ground current. Lightning strikes also deal low damage to enemies near the target. Damage is reduced beyond five targets. Now, depending on how this works, it can either be just a decent bit of AoE damage or very significant for certain procs because a lightning strike strikes proc a ton of additional effects through some of these other talents, but they only strike on one target when they proc. But if this AoE lightning strikes means that all the other targets being hit with this AoE are also considered an additional proc of lightning strikes, this would be very strong for additional procs. Like for instance, in the capstone we went over, while avatar isn't active, lightning strikes have a 10% chance of granting you avatar for four seconds. If everything hit, 
has that chance as well, you could have a very high chance to get Avatar anytime Lightning Strike procs in an AoE situation. Don't know how this is actually going to work, but if it allows a lot more procs of Lightning Strikes, it's going to be very strong. Then next up, we have another choice node. We have Storm Shield. Intervening a target grants him a shield for five seconds that absorbs magic damage equal to three times your armor. Now, from what I've heard right now, this would be like 30, 35,000 for a Fury Warrior, but this is actually very good, especially for Prot Warriors, because I don't think a lot of DPS Warriors, I don't think Fury takes Intervene at all, but as a Prot Warrior, being able to not only take physical hits from targets, which is what Intervene normally does, but now you give them a big magic shield and magic damage is usually what's killing people. You're rarely actually taking like a physical hit from an enemy unless you're say another tank. This could also be decent say if you're in a raid situation, intervening another tank, giving them a decent shield and taking a physical hit could be decent for some specific fights. But in a lot of very specific situations, this will be a very good support utility. But then the second choice is Stormbolt. Stormbolt also hits two additional nearby enemies, stunning them for two seconds. Right now, Stormbolt is a ranged stun, does some damage stuns for four seconds. This now causes two more Stormbolts that stun for two seconds. So for Fury Warriors, you're probably going to take Stormbolt in all AoE situations. Maybe you'll take Storm Shield in some specific raid scenarios. And then below that, we have another choice node. We have Gathering Clouds. Your attacks trigger lightning strikes 15% more often. Now again, we don't know what this is meaning. If this is meaning 15% on the already 10%, so it would just be a few additional percent, or if this is legitimately just adding on another 15% chance to proc, so at a base you'd have a 25% chance to proc, that would seem too much, but the second option is Thorum's Might. Lightning Strikes generate three rage, then you just get Revenge, Raging Blow, and Execute damage is increased by 15%. Now, as I said, don't take a lot of these numbers super serious. The numbers are the things that are guaranteed to change and are very easy to change, but right now it seems like the second one would be so significantly better if the first one isn't adding another 15% chance of proc. Because if it's just adding another couple percent chance of proc, the second choice is probably always going to be better. And then we have the right side, starting with Strength of the Mountain, Shield same damage increased by 20%, Bloodthirst and Rampage damage increased by 10%. Just some damage increase, these are both pretty strong. Then we have a choice node, Flashing Skies, Chance for Lightning Strikes to critically hit is increased by 5%, and their Critical Strike damage is increased by 10%. Then, Valajar Training, Lightning Strikes reduce the cooldown of Ravager by 0.5 seconds. Now, crit damage is something that's usually very good on Warriors because you usually have a lot of crit, especially something like Fury, where you have a cooldown that you have up a lot that just gives you very high crit. So this first one could be just a pretty big damage increase. Now the second one I think is probably always going to be taken for prot warriors because Ravenger doesn't normally line up perfectly with other things. But right now as Fury, taking this second choice node where lightning strikes reduce your cooldown of Ravenger probably won't be taken unless this procs so much that you can basically get double the Ravagers. Because as of right now for Fury warriors, you have both Ravager and Recklessness, which have a 1.5 minute base cooldown, but in one of the other talents you take, the fury you spend reduces both of those cooldowns. So you get those both back much quicker and they both line up perfectly at all times. But if you had both of those like you do now, and then you take Valorant Training, Ravager and Recklessness would not line up to be used at the same time. So you would basically need this to be good enough so Ravager would be up enough to where it will line up with your second Recklessness each time instead of lining up for every single one. And I doubt it's going to proc that much. Much, so most likely Fury would have to take Flashing Skies. And then uh, finally, we have Bursts of Power. Lightning Strikes have a 20% chance to make your next two Shield Slams or Blood Thirst have a no cooldown. Now, both of these can be pretty significant. The Shield Slams are going to be much stronger, I think. Shield Slam is a much bigger part of Prot Warrior's single target damage and also proc additional stuff. And just getting two of them reset back to back that you can spam out is very strong. Blood Thirst is much less of Fury's damage. But if we're at a point in the War Within, where Bloodthirst is something we use on cooldown, this could also be pretty significant. Also, if I'm thinking about this being like in a PvP situation or a survival situation, if you can have just two Bloodthirst with no cooldown, you can either use those for 6% of your life as healing, or you can use your big defensive cooldown where Bloodthirst now heals you for 20% of your life, and you can just spam those back to back, healing around 50% of your total life almost instantly. But I do think with a lot of these talents, I think Bloodthirst is going to be something in the War Within where Fury Warriors use on cooldown instead of like in Dragonflight where depending on our tier set, we may never use Bloodthirst or we may only 
use it at specific times. So overall, I think the Mountain Thane hero spec is really cool. I think this is probably going to be one of the best hero specs just based off of the theme and the ideas within this. Some of these can significantly change your rotation, specifically when talking about Fury. It's going to add a ton of really cool VFX. It's just going to be cool thematically and gameplay wise as being a Fury or Prot warrior and just having lightning strikes strike down everywhere, having all this lightning proc everywhere, turning into like a lightning god with avatar so i think this is pretty much every element of a hero spec coming together in the correct ways it's cool thematically it's gonna have a bunch of really cool vfx it's gonna make playing your spec look and feel cooler and it's gonna have some things that can change up your play style in some smaller ways or can potentially just change up some of the abilities you're using and when you're using them i think this is probably going to be one of those hero specs that they kind of try to bring all of the other hero specs up to so overall, a very good early showing. That's all I want to go over. So thanks for watching.